Hey, what's up, Shot Makers? It's Rob here. I got my man Taylor Ashford from the College Park Skyhawks. And y'all know I'm from College Park, so you know I had to represent. Taylor, tell the people about yourself. Yeah, I'm the manager of corporate social responsibility for the Hawks affiliate teams, which are the College Park Skyhawks in the G League and Hawks Talent GC in the NBA 2K League. So super excited. I get to do a lot of cool things and provide resources to the community. So happy to talk to y'all. Man, that's what's up. That's what's up. So wait, so talk to us about the eSports team. This is the logo I got on right now, actually. So Hawks Talent GC, I think we just finished the, the league itself. The NBA 2K League just finished its sixth season. So okay. right now, I think we've been a team for about five years of that. So one of the older teams in the league, we just had the number one draft pick in the previous 2023 season, MDS from Chicago. So shout out to MDS. But okay. really, um, the NBA 2K League in the NBA, some of the teams have a, an affiliate team that plays competitive esports, competitive 2K. So everything Let's you go. see on the NBA level, we do on the esports side. So like I said, we just had number one pick. So... MDS walked up on stage in New York and put on the hat yeah, and yeah. shook the commissioner's hand. We have wow. trades and transactions, free agency, just like everyone else. These guys practice every day for multiple hours. I feel like it's at least like four hours a day this year or something. I don't want to give any secrets, but they practice a lot every day and they compete in person. Mostly they compete virtually. We had a couple of teams compete with us in person this year, so uh, yeah. it's super cool. And we play all our games on Twitch, so make sure to follow Skyhawks and Hawks Talent on Instagram and Twitter. I know you personally from the Skyhawks. Yeah, and yeah. Being able to come in and, and check out what you guys are doing there, man. Talk about how you're impacting the community with the Skyhawks. I'm not from College Park. I'm from Kansas City, Missouri originally. So I had worked in baseball out there in my community with the Royals, um, doing different camps, clinics with them. But I've also always worked in Parks and Rec in Kansas City and in Seattle. So with the Skyhawks, this was a new role. And one of my biggest missions when I first got here in 2021 was just to see what is the College Park community like and what do they need the most? What do they truly connect with and how can we truly yeah. be a resource that because at, especially in the post-COVID or during the COVID era of life, a lot of companies, they come in and they want to do something so they can feel good yeah. about it. And, you know, I want us to truly be a resource that we're like, we like part of College Park family. Like, we don't want to feel like we're the company coming in and, you know, just throwing stuff at y'all. But, no, we're, you know, doing things that are truly impactful, that are true to the South Side. And that's kind of our motto, just being true to the South Side and everything we do. Okay, okay, okay. So speaking of true, there's no secret, two chains. He's the owner of the College Park Skyhawks, right? Yeah. What's that like working with a South Sider as you make this impact with the College Park Skyhawks? I mean, it's super cool. I'm from Kansas City. We don't have the extensive music culture that you all have here. So, you know, 2 Chain, somebody I listened to since Player Circle, just seeing his growth. And, you know, one of the coolest parts about my job is, you know, we get to work with the True Foundation. It's, it's nonprofit. So, we just did a back to school drive with them out at a Escobar South on the South Side and gave away okay. tons of free tickets to the up, upcoming Skyhawk season while they gave away backpacks and other things, face paint and haircut. We worked with them over, you know, last uh, around the holidays last year in December, we passed out a thousand lunch bags yeah. throughout the community. And that's an issue that they've been doing for a while with their hashtag lunch bag and also with their toy drive. So collecting toys, creating meals. So it's it's been cool just seeing, like, how involved him and his family are in the community. And seeing them at games is always cool. That gives us a little leg up in the business, too. You know, people want to be affiliated with 2 Chain. It's cool. Sure. It, makes, it makes a lot of conversation and connections a lot easier for me at times, for sure. So shout Let's out go. to them. Let's go. <laughs> so, Taylor, working with the Skyhawks and, and the G League, you see a lot of talent come through. Yeah. What do you guys got in store this year? Yeah, so... It's dope. We have our tryouts coming out in October. Definitely be on the lookout for that. And it's an open tryout pretty much. G League is the league of grind. I definitely enjoy working in it. I had cousins and friends playing it growing up. So I've been super familiar, but really yeah. we got a new coaching staff. We got a new, we got a new head coach and new GM. So really looking to focus in and build the newest craft of Atlanta Hawks. We just drafted three great players on the Hawks end and the Hawks draft. So looking for some of those guys to get rest with us and grow with us, but also looking forward to the G League draft, to our open tryouts. So we've had a couple of players. The two years I've been here, we've had 
multiple players get actually picked from the tryout. So one of them got yeah. called up to play in Madison Square Garden on Christmas Day a couple of years ago. So wow, it's some cool stories, man. I think last year we had like four of our players get called up during the season three or four. We definitely had a talent here. Is and it's it's tricky because you know you love to see them get that opportunity, but you know sometimes yeah. it does kind of hurt what we got going on if guys are getting pulled out. Witnessing that balance, I'm excited to see how the new coaching staff just kind of handles like. We're going to have guys that move up and down, so excited to see. Hopefully we can make the playoffs again and bring home that whole, the whole trophy this time, man. Oh, I yeah, would like man. to put a nah. ring on my finger. So. <laughs> <laughs> hey, man, every, everybody takes the rings, man. Yeah, for sure. I've been lucky enough to experience the, the quality of, this, of a G League game, and it's definitely an experience. It's, it's way more than going into it what you would think. It's literally no different than being at a high-quality Hawks game. Yeah. You know, so – you coming from Parks and Rec, so that's a familiar yeah. background for me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> My first real job was at Parks and Rec. How did you transition from Parks and Rec into what you're doing right now, man, with major sports? Yeah, it was tricky and a long road, to be honest, to kind of date myself. I graduated with my degree in Parks, Recreation, and Tourism from the University of Missouri in 2013. Sport management was like a new program while I was at the school, so I think it came on like my sophomore year. And, you know, I hopped into the program. I was doing poor in a business school anyway, but I knew I wanted to work in sports. So I'm like, <laughs> you know, this will help me be an agent or whatever. It moved me closer. And, man, yeah. just learning just all the different pieces of the business then was cool. And I was trying to get internships, man. I was applying for everything on sports. I mean, not on teamwork online, like everything in that sports space. Yeah. That was kind of like in the Midwest, so Kansas City, Chicago, maybe looked in Detroit, some other places. But really wanted to stay local to kind of get my feet off the ground and, I think I got one bite back from the Chiefs. They emailed me back one time, and then I, I didn't really yeah. get too much bite back. But definitely, I had worked for, like, the city before as, like, a youth program. And they were familiar with me, but really didn't have no investment there. I applied with Parks and Rec and KC and for an internship that summer, and they gave me a paid internship. So I was like, okay, Let's that's go. better than I expected. I was going to go do stuff for the Chiefs or the Royals for free. So, you know, let me get paid. <laughs> and it was a crazy experience. It was, like, a 10-week program. They had me working, like, I was tree trimming. I was working in animal control. Yeah. I was, I got to work in the community centers. Like they had Kansas City split up by region. So it was like North, Central, South. So I got to work in all three regions, like park reservation. But when I got to work in the community centers, they let me do that for two weeks. So they had like 10 community centers. I got to travel around and just get to learn. And, you know, I grew up in some of them. Once that experience was over, that was something like, dang, how do I work on the recreation side? Because the pro sports just wasn't, wasn't feeling like a thing at the time, and I really wanted yeah. to get that experience. So, actually, ended up getting the opportunity to come in entry level as a recreation director at a community center, and then did that for three years and tried to get back in sports on the West Coast in Seattle, and really didn't get the opportunity there, but did stuff there. So, 2019, 2020, I'm like, man, I'm gonna go back to school and see if another degree yeah. helped me. So, luckily, just. It's crazy because I started going back to school in 2020, but, you know, the pandemic hit. It was no sport. So mm -hmm. at a point, I was feeling like I was doing it for nothing. But luckily, 2021, it was time for me to do my summer internships. And I had been coaching basketball back in Kansas City and volunteer work. So a lot of connections I had through volunteer work, through youth coaching, through working at Parks and Rec actually opened some doors for me because, you know, yeah. I always knew I could go back to Parks and Rec, and you work in the space. There's nothing wrong with Parks and Rec. Like, you deal with a lot of people. You can do a lot of cool things. I got to coach. I got to create basketball leagues, and I got to, you know, yeah. coach multiple sports. But I wanted to kind of focus my work more on the pro side. So once I found some internships and just networking really helped me get a foot in the door a little more. Mm -hmm. Once I got my networking opportunity through a former fan of me coaching with the yeah. Royals, I got to get a paid internship working in the community I grew up in, and doing similar stuff I do now. So it showed me that if I worked in maybe the community space in sports that I could still fuse some of that parks and recreation and some of that Definitely. event planning, some of those leagues and clinics, some of those bigger events and some of what I already did. And just also all the stuff they already did on the Hawks side, which is yeah. a big overload. Just like seeing me work in parks and rec, you know, the government spending versus the team spending a lot different. So <laughs> Totally think, different. That's been kind of like the hardest transition, just being a lot more creative, being able, you know, Parks and Rec. I didn't say I worked with myself a lot more, but, you know, we didn't have as many departments of that, as many people to go get answers or run ideas through or even. So just learning how to be more creative, being more vocal, trying things and taking risks has been huge. Like 
but just still on those same foundation of what I learned in Parks and Rec was like knowing how to help like provide a product that people or a resource that people truly want and need. So it's been cool, man. It's tough. I'm still figuring it out. Man. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's dope, man. So I told you as a ritual, you come on the shop, make this with you. You got to create a challenge. Yeah. Yeah. So what challenge do you have for the people today? In this basketball space, I'm big on giving back to your community. For at least one minute, I'm going to tell you how to go longer, but just for the recap purposes, work out with like a, a, a younger sibling, work out with a, a younger cousin, or work out just like a mentor. Get out on the court. Even if you see, like, you go out to your local court and see some younger folks that need some help, try to give somebody a piece of the game sometime this week, whether that be yeah. for a couple minutes or for a, bit, a little bit longer. But teach somebody how to shoot, work on that elbow for the free throws, or release, whatever. Just try to pour into someone in the generation below you on this basketball court. Yeah.